Hello, I'm Dave Avery. And I'm Chris Magana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll show you a new art exhibit at St. John's College and introduce you to County Councilman Derek Fink. But first, making headlines this week. Well, Dave, we survived Snowzilla 2016. Good for us. We did it. Here we are. We're still alive. And Snowzilla. Yeah. Oh, go, no. Go, go, Snowzilla. Snowzilla. <laughs> Well, when all was said and done, the snow monster dumped a record high 29.2 inches on BWI Airport and all over the county. It also required a historic response and neighborhoods were still digging out four days after the last flake fell. Here's what County Executive Steve Shue said last week as the storm approached. We have 240 plows standing by and ready to go. 600 people uh, have been activated to handle this emergency and our Department of Public works crews are already out pre-treating the roads. We've stockpiled 13,000 tons of salt. So we're at full capacity on salt. That's more than enough to carry us through this incident. We've procured a variety of other pieces of equipment, including front end loaders, bucket trucks, and high rise Humvees. We've sent out eight public service announcements and we will reach full uh, activation status of the emergency operations center at three o'clock today. We have to thank a lot of people for the tremendous job they did responding to the storm. First has to be the police, the firefighters and paramedics who were all out in tough conditions dealing with emergencies. They did have some amazing reinforcements. Maryland National Guard Unit 224 Medical showed up with Humvee ambulances to help public safety personnel get through some tough spots. So thank you to all of these great folks. Of course, we need to thank all the folks at Public Works fielding calls and mobilizing plows and all of the contractors who were out with their equipment clearing the roads. The Emergency Operations Center was stocked with staff and personnel who worked more than 100 hours through the storm away from their families. Thank you to all of them and the volunteers who helped staff the call centers. And did we mention this was our new Emergency Management Director's first snow storm in his new job? Kevin Aftung did a great job. Not only was he running the ship at the Emergency Operations Center, he was also calling in favors to bring in additional equipment. Nice job, Chief. What about you, Dave? How'd you fare during the storm? I did pretty well. Um, as you know, I, I run the, the, the Facebook page and the social media for the county. And uh, lots of activity. There was lots of activity. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I was not fishing for a compliment, but <laughs> um, it was, it, I was here at the Emergency Operations Center on Friday. And uh, I'll tell you what, when, when those guys from the National Guard showed up, it was like Elvis had entered the right? building. I mean, everybody was like, well, and you know, it's snowing pretty hard at this point and yeah. it's pitch black out. And these guys just walk in the front door, you know. We're here. <laughs> yeah, and like full fatigues, you know, the whole thing. And these vehicles they had, which, you know, we just put up on the screen are, are pretty impressive. It's a so it was Definitely. cool. It was, I mean, it was, it was really, really, impressive to see everything happening and I don't think people really realize how how many folks that go into this this operation I mean we've talked about it a couple times now we had um, uh, Kevin Act uh, Aftung on the on the show a couple of times and got to know him a little bit but um, he did an excellent job but we had volunteers at the EOC mm -hmm. we had people in the call center at the Bureau of Highways we had all the contractors and drivers out there on the roads we had all the police firefighters you know uh, on one day, I, I got a chance to be out in the, in the elements at several points throughout the storm. And one day, I think it was Sunday, but at this point, it all kind of melted together. It all together. blurred together. Yeah. It was one big old weekend. I was driving down the street, and here comes a fire truck with the lights and sirens. And uh, you know he, you know how they come rumbling through, and it kind of shakes you. And then you look, and then here comes this little pickup truck behind them with a plow on it. Yeah. So, I mean, they all had – it was so coordinated. And yep. to think that – People were getting transported to the hospital on Friday night or Saturday night during this storm is mm -hmm. is something else. And, I think and that's you're right. different from getting your, your street clear. You yes. know what I mean? And, and and you know, I have to say people were pretty patient and pretty understanding and pretty generally happy that mm -hmm. you know they were fine with just waiting it out and you know helping out their neighbors with a ton of examples of people helping each other. And so I think you know, when anytime you have that much snow, which by the way, you win the snow for the year. Yes. It was kind of a lame contest because you're way off too. Unless it doesn't snow again, 
You were what did you say? Twenty eight. I said eighteen inches in one event, thirty two overall. Okay, so we we almost got to thirty two. We might in have the another first event. event. We don't know. Right, so, so we'll it's probably going to greatly exceed your number, but your number was closer I'm, than I'm mine. Closer. So credit where credit is. Thank you. And today. everyone told me I was going to be wrong because we had an El Nino season, mm -hmm. so I I wasn't going to win the snow event, but I knew, I knew. I told you, if you recall, now I may have gotten the number wrong, but but several weeks ago, I think at least a month ago, I said, we're gonna be like an El yep. Nino once once it comes around yep. the other side. Well, a couple of things happened last week that might have gotten lost with all the snow mania. The Maryland General Assembly is in session, of course, and the Anne Arundel County delegation heard from Annapolis Mayor Mike Panalides and County Executive Steve Shue. The county proposed a small number of modest bills that improve the tax credit program for recycling oyster shells, allow different chambers of commerce to have a say in the selection of school board members, and move tax sale notifications to online instead of in the newspaper. County Executive Shu said another top priority is to make sure the counties are receiving more state money to build and repair roads. Well, obviously, we'd appreciate supporting our legislative beyond, package, beyond the legislative and, package. and then uh, highway use <clears throat> is incredibly important. Uh, yeah, our the county's roads are have deteriorated tremendously over the last decade uh, as a result of the uh, elimination of you know, the highway user funds for road maintenance. And uh, this budget that the governor's proposed does make a down payment on a restoration of those funds, and I would ask that the delegation support the reinstatement of highway user funds to the counties. They're really, really important. We can't, we, we, without state help, it, it's almost impossible for us to improve the road system in, in the county. Years ago, the county received $32 million from the state for roads. That number fell to next to nothing before Governor Hogan, and the legislature started restoring some of that money last year. Well, Dave, every week we have something on the show about volunteers. This week is, of course, no exception, with of all the people who helped out with the blizzard. Rec and Parks took some time this week at Quiet Waters Park to recognize its own volunteer superstars. Rec and Parks Director Rick Anthony told the 10 recipients that their volunteer activities are what really make all of the facilities and programs top-notch in the county. Rick talked to Youth Volunteer of the Year recipients Devin Neal and Lexi Ordakowski. Thanks guys, Rick Anthony here. We are here with our two youth most outstanding volunteers of the year here at our first annual awards banquet. Just to give you a little idea, of these uh, young adults have done a tremendous job and have really helped the department in a lot of different areas. And I wanna let them just talk a little bit about their projects and some of the ways that they have uh, contributed to the mission of the Anne Arundel County Rec and Parks. Devin, tell me a little bit about your project, how it came about and uh, all the challenges and the things that you went through. Well, my project was my Eagle Scout project over at Spriggs Farm Park in Amagathy. It's a nice little park. It's right in my backyard and something I'm really passionate about and uh, it's just this park, it doesn't have a lot of development on it yet and it's just sort of being a catalyst to get things started over there. And what specifically did you have to, to build there? Oh, um, I built a park sign for the park. And that is very important because it is one of our underdeveloped park and uh, a lot, it's getting a lot of attention these days. So we appreciate all the effort and, and the work that you uh, put in for that. And Lexi, just a little bit about your project. How did that come about? And uh, tell us a little bit about what you contribute. Um, I worked with the All Sensory Trail in Lake Waterford. And um, this project is special to me because my brother is visually impaired. So I worked um, adding elements to the trail. We added a bench and uh, we fundraised through my school for my silver award for Girl Scouts. Well, we thank you so much for your efforts. You guys uh, are really what makes our department go. So thank you, celebrate this night, and hopefully we'll uh, get more projects out of you in the future. Back to you guys. Congratulations to all of the awardees. Well, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we return, we'll talk with County Council Chairman Derek Fink. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town, and we'll be right back.
Hey, I'm Tyler Perry. Do you know what hunger in America looks like? Well, it has many faces, and 16 million of those belong to children. Yet billions of pounds of food go to waste each year, and this is unacceptable. You can be a part of the solution. Join us in supporting the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, which rescues our surplus foods and provides meals to many families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org today. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back. Joining us on Week in Review this week, we have County Council Chairman Derek Fink in the studio. Good Welcome. Thank Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, you are a longtime resident of Anne Arundel County, born and yeah. raised in Pasadena. Born and raised in Pasadena, graduated from Chesapeake yep. High School. Chesapeake Absolutely. Cougars, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been working in the council? I've, uh, I'm serving my second year and my second term. So this is my Very sixth good. year on the council. And what are your roles and responsibilities as chairman? So just became chairman uh, last month. And the chairman is uh, still one of seven on the council, obviously. But uh, we help facilitate the meeting, run the meeting, set the agenda. Uh, for the meeting with all the legislation coming down. So a little bit of extra responsibility, but the, the main goal is still, still, I'm still a councilman out of District 3 representing Pasadena. Nice. Well, I think this is your second time as chairman, right? It is. I was, so I was you, chairman for a year uh, last term, too. So you're doing yeah. a good job. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, you get the hang of it because it is, it's not easy to, to do it. Like, you have to get the whole rules, the order of procedure and everything down. We do. Robert's rules, the rules yeah. of the council, and, of course, we have a par parliamentarian there to help as well. So... When we don't always have it right, she uh, she normally keeps us in line. Yes, Beth Jones, very <laughs> she's very good at it too. So tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're most proud of your work on the council. Yeah, so so on the council, I think our one of our biggest responsibilities is the power of the budget and the authority that comes with with making the budget and, and the final say. Uh, we've been very successful in Pasadena and bringing some of the projects back. We've got a new brand new police station, a brand new fire station. We That's made right. some major improvements on Mountain Road using county dollars. Uh, Northeast High School started funding for High Point Elementary School. Uh, so at the end of the day, I think the projects and the money that I've been able to bring back to Pasadena and help, um, you know, the quality of life issues in Pasadena have been, have been uh, some of my more successful and, and, and prouder accomplishments. Uh, new boat ramp at Fort Small Park, the first public boat ramp in the entire county. I can't yeah. So, that. Yeah, it's, it's been, be uh, we've been, we've been very fortunate in Pasadena over the last five years. Because I moved there? It, it had a lot to do with that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It had a lot to do with that. See, see, <laughs> see, it's my councilman right there. Uh, real quick, what is your, what are kind of the, for people who may not pay attention, what are the geographic boundaries of your district? So District 3 rep, uh, compromises all of Pasadena, 21122. And Gibson Island, as well as a small part of Glen Burnie up there off of Marley Neck Road and, and Sally Road. So all of Pasadena, portion of, of Glen Burnie and Gibson Island. Okay. What's on the agenda right now? What are you guys working on? So actually, we just passed the largest fee cut in county history. We uh, like just, fee just cuts. a few days ago, we I did. Like we passed a big, uh, big fee cut. It's going to help spur economic development in the county, create some more jobs, and pump, pump some, some money back into the economy. So we're really proud of that. Uh, that took a lot of time, and we got a seven. I'm sorry, six-one vote at the end of the day, and I think we're going to see a lot of positive results over the next couple of years in our economy from that. That's fantastic. It yeah. seems like the council is is getting a lot done in the last six months. I mean, I've been around long enough that you know sometimes the legislative branch of county government. Um, you know, they go to the, the end of the period that the bill can go, and then sometimes it'll be reintroduced. It just seems like it took a lot longer in the past, in past years to, to get things passed, and now it seems like you guys are, you know, every couple of months you have a, a major piece of legislation. Uh, I would probably agree with that. It's nice to hear also. It's <laughs> nice to hear we're doing a good job in getting things done. We've, uh, we had a, quite a year last year, our first year on this term, and uh, a lot of good things. We changed the way we do the budget with the bonding bills. Uh, we had the largest tax cut in county history um, you know, a few months ago as well. So we've, we've had a pretty successful first year on the council, and we're looking forward to another second, successful second year as well. Yeah, and, and check out this segue. You mentioned six months. Yeah. You have a six-month-old. I do. And a three-year-old. And a three-year-old. So tell us about your weekend. Yeah, with so the my snow. weekend, uh, you know, with the blizzard was exciting. First, I'm, I think I'm the only neighbor on my street without a snowblower. So we did a lot of <laughs> shoveling. And this year, I had my three-year-old who was determined to go out there every single time with me and shovel. Oh. <laughs> and when you get a blizzard of snow, as many people know, you can't just shovel once. you got to no. keep up with it. Yep. So we were out four or five times. And, and Owen, who's my three-year-old, was out there every time with me, buckled up, shoveling. 
he would get stuck. I'd have to pull him out. <laughs> and we'd do a shovel more, and then he'd get stuck, and we'd pull him out. So it was really fun. Kyle's my six-month-old, and uh, my wife Kristen stuck his hand in the snow, and you could see his facial reaction Aww. and that kind of thing. So it was really neat. I'm glad it's awesome. done. Yeah. Hopefully we don't get any more this year, but uh, we had a fun weekend, and Owen really enjoyed it. That Snowman. Must been, that must have been, Owen must Absolutely. have been, like, like completely... <laughs> yeah. Like, where am I with this? Yeah, it's his first big he, uh, storm. He walked off the shoveled path. That was it. He was done. <laughs> One step in, he's stuck. He's not getting out. Dad. He had to shovel, off. Had to shovel out an area oh, for us gosh. to make the snowman and all because he, he wasn't able to walk around in it. But uh, it was fun. He, he certainly enjoyed it more than I did. A good sledding around you, too. I'm sorry? Good sledding. Yeah, sledding, the snow making, snowballs. We did it all. <laughs> we, had, we had a good time. How about the plowing? Because, I mean, I was I was out quite a bit, actually, throughout the storm. And I thought that the response was amazing. And there were times, especially on uh, Sunday, uh, the day after it snowed, and Monday, where I'd be driving and, and just about like every other street, I would see a piece of equipment on it yeah. working. Yeah, I think the county did an excellent job. We've got an unprecedented amount of snow, being the most snow we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think DPW really did a fantastic job in keeping the main roads plowed the entire time and really got in the neighborhood roads a lot sooner than, than anticipated. We originally heard that they weren't even gonna start worrying about the neighborhoods until, until Tuesday or Wednesday. Right, right. And it seemed like you know we were getting at least a path down the roads uh, on Sunday and Monday, so you could at least get in and out. You know, you might mm -hmm. not have both your lanes open, but you're at least able to get in and out. So I think Anne County did a great job. Uh, DPW, Chris Phibbs, and his operation really stepped up. Yeah. Oh. Similar to what you were saying with shoveling, you got to stay on top of it. You got to stay on top of it. DPW was doing. Yeah, absolutely. Stay on top. And we have almost 300 vehicles out there plowing. So crazy. the county really stepped up. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah and when you're cool. when you're on the A shift, which is of course the first shift that comes in, so the people who came in Friday afternoon, you know, they were back out there on Sunday, and in between, they're catching. You know, they're sleeping where they can, yeah. and as long as they can, and that's not very a very comfortable way to be working and then you're out in the elements and, Absolutely. and then a, maybe your truck gets stuck or something I mean it's a hard job it's a rough 48 72 hours for yeah. those folks they're eating in their car they're drinking coffee in their car the whole time uh, you know not getting a whole lot of sleep so a lot of a lot of credit certainly goes to them so for folks out there that are uh, watching and they might have a question for you, comment, what's the best way to reach, contact your office? Yeah, contact my office. My phone number is 410-222-6890. You can send me an email at dfink at aacounty.org. Any streets that haven't been plowed yet, hopefully that's not the case, but any other issues, we'd certainly love to, love to hear from and, and help where we can. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining Thanks us on the program. Invite. It was I great having you. you. Stay you, warm. Yeah. Hope you guys are taking it easy with the rest of the week with the snow. We're getting there. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. Welcome back. Let's take a break from all the snow and government and talk a little bit about culture, shall we? Let's get a little culture. A little culture. St. John's College has a great exhibit going on right now called Pure Photography, pictorial and modern photographs from the Syracuse University Art Collection. Our own Pat Daly is there with a primer. Pat? Thanks, guys. I'm here at the Mitchell Art Gallery here at St. John's College with Lucinda Edinburgh, the art educator for the, college, for the, the gallery. Lucinda, please tell us about your latest art exhibit and how can we get, how can we see it and when, how long is it going to last? Well, thank you. Um, the exhibition, Pure Photography, Pictorialist and Modern Photographs from the Syracuse University Collection opened on January 13th and it'll be here through February 28th. And uh, it's a wonderful collection of 30 works dating from 1900 to uh, the late 40s, I think maybe even early 50s, a wide collection of, of well-known photographers, uh, including um, Edward Weston, uh, Stieglitz, Edward Steichen, I mean, it's just uh, Imogen Cunningham. Uh, the gallery is open every day but Monday, and from noon to 5 p.m., we are free and open to the public, and that's thanks to the generosity of our membership. 
And we offer other lectures and workshops and things that people can go to the website for. Okay. Lucinda, what style of art is here at the exhibit? Well, the exhibition is interesting because it's such a range of styles, starting out with pictorial photography, which these early photographers had to justify the artistry for photography, where it had been a, a, a photo chemical process. It was something taught in the chemistry department. And they felt obliged to make these look like paintings. And then after they really had established themselves as artists and not just technicians, then it moved into things that weren't so cloudy and moody, uh, fuzzy and atmospheric to things that were more stark and looking at um, high contrast images, shapes, and not so much about the atmosphere of the subject. Can you let people know how to get yes. in contact with yes. you? Yes. Uh, go to www.sjc.edu and look under events and you'll see the Mitchell Gallery under that. Obviously a lot of great things to see here at the, the exhibit. We appreciate your time, Lucinda. Back to you guys. Amazing stuff, Pat. Just like your photog photography, right, Dave? All that oh, Facebook photography? Mine's just as good. Right. I did get some good shots yeah. this weekend. It was fun. I tell you, there's people out there that are, they are not famous by any means, but man, can they shoot some amazing pictures, put them up <laughs> on Facebook, and I'm like, I would buy a print of that. I would. You know what it is? Great cameras. Yeah. <laughs> camera makes a really big Great difference. Camera. I shouldn't say that out loud because I should make everyone think that I'm like a fantastic <laughs> photographer, but I'm kind of a point and shoot kind of guy. All of the but, settings you can do now on like Instagram right. with your filters. No. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't do filters. That's not my thing. You're, but, you're a purist. But um, the, another cool thing that I ran into is that I would approach people out out in the bout and say, you know, I'm from the Facebook page and usually so the Facebook page is about a year old and we're almost to 10,000 people and for the first six months or so, whenever I approach people, I would tell them, you know, I'm the county page, this is how you find it, you know, my Anne Arundel, this and that. And more and more, when I approach people, I don't need to tell them, they already know. And that's, that's, awesome. that's really cool, yeah. you know? It's like when Kristen Lagana's in the grocery store and everybody says, you're the girl from Week in Review, we love you, you're the best. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. All the time? All the time. See? So tell me, Kristen, what did you do during the snowstorm? Well, you know, I, I have made it pretty much public knowledge by this point that I, in fact, love snow, in case anyone out there didn't know. Right, you know all the tricks about snow. tucking your pants into your, into your boots. Right, and... I love snow. So um, I, I really enjoyed watching it fall, and then once um, it was good to go out and it wasn't blowing sideways and hitting you in the right. face, um, I really enjoyed going to some of the local neighborhood parks to right. spots. I knew we were going to be messed up with footprints everywhere like the next day, so I went out and saw, like, the nice pretty fields of snow before they were touched. Did you um, go to, um, was it Fed Hill where they built the, uh, the, the snowboard ramps? No, I didn't go there, but I'll tell you in my neighborhood we had a, a couple forts and we had a snow lounge at the end of one street, so that was nice and hip. Snow lounge. A snow lounge. What, what goes on at the snow lounge? Oh, it's just a good camaraderie amongst friends Cup for of those Joe and... with uh, equal interests in snow. Interesting. Just, I, just why do I feel like you're not telling us what <laughs> was going on at the snow, snow lounge? lounge. Um, I will tell you, though, I thought that there was a, a lot of uh, nice neighborly attitudes about shoveling and making sure that our sidewalks were clean and um, everyone was out helping. So yeah. that was nice to see. Uh, you tend to get a little territorial sometimes with folks putting out chairs and, and cones and spots. And I get it. Sometimes when you clear out a spot and you, you feel like you put all that work in, you, you want your spot, but mm -hmm. a lot of people don't see it that way. So th right. there were a couple little uh, So what did you watch? Like what did you watch on? Did you um, watch TV? Did you watch did movies? I, watch? Uh, I watched the Netflix series Narcos, so we finished that Me up. too! Okay. Very well, good. I watched and a couple of them. We were talking about how I, I, I lack in the classic movie arena. Yeah, so. so. Uh, I did watch Goodfellas. That's a good one. So. The two youths. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, that movie. No, that's my cousin Vinny. I'm sorry. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Okay, so that that movie. That's though. the you think I'm funny, you think I'm a clown, you know. Right, right, right. And that's then, you that's know, not that movie. Bada bing. Um, but yeah. oh man, don't mess with the Italian mob. That's a good movie. I'll tell you what. But I think my favorite part was um, they had a little bit more of um, a special thing going on in the jail, and they got to make they had their own Italian kitchen, and they made spaghetti on. And, and the sauce on Sunday nights, so, well, Italians will call it gravy. 
Um, yes. And so they had their own little conditions in the jail where, where the guards would let them have, you know, things like prosciutto and mozzarella come in, and, right. and they had their own unique Oh, meals. that's right. That's so right. It would like come that. wrapped in, like, a towel or yeah, something. Yeah, I got the red. I got the white. So, yeah. yeah. That was, that was you know cool. what? That Now that you mention it, you know, folks who are, who are not, Italian or have no Italian roots and they want to learn how to cook Italian food, you can learn from Goodfellas yeah, and The Godfather. Absolutely. Because in both movies, they're holed up and they're making sauce yeah. and you, you can Gravy. learn how to do it. Gravy. And as an Italian, I can tell you one way to sound like you know what you're talking about, drop the vowel. It's prosciutto, mozzarella. Isn't it prosciutto? You can put the J in, just don't put the, the Is that o. the South County accent? Prosciutto. Prosciutto. The South County Italian Bummer. accent. Bummer. <laughs> Water. Shush. Um, so I did that. Speaking of cooking, I made a great pot of chili. Um, Ooh, I like chili. We did Chinese food one night, so we'd have leftovers throughout the weekend. Good one. I made cookies. Too many cookies, Dave. Too many cookies. It's okay. It's okay. Cookies. You're going to okay. have to help. You had two Christmases? <laughs> You did Christmas over again with all the eating it stuff. It was crazy. You're not to it was eat. crazy. How about you? Uh, let's see. So I was working a lot, but right. I did find time to. So I, I was, as I mentioned on the show last time, I really wanted to watch this. Um, they call it the Godfather Epic, which is right the, the, one, the, the HBO one and two uh, extended pushed together, where they 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 cut it up and they put them in chronological order. And so my neighbors came over to watch it. They um, shout out to Chris and Chris and Kara. Shout out. Chris and Kara, what's up? Uh, they came over because they had never seen it before. So we put it in and we're, we're getting ready to hunker right, down for right? a seven and a half You're hour You're excited because people came over for this. Right, we had taco yeah, night, we had like, fancy beer and stuff. Nothing can go wrong and? One hour and 40 minutes into the movie, it crashed. What? There were, it, I've heard two schools of thought. One was that there were so many people watching the Godfather epic on Saturday that it couldn't, couldn't handle, handle it. the system, couldn't handle it. And then the other theory She's was that, that because of the snow or the blizzard that it affected it in some way. But no, because we changed the channel and it was fine. So it was, people were watching that movie like crazy. But there were a lot of people upset. And, and they were getting into it too. Like yeah. Chris and Kara, they were quoting it already. But, and then of course we heard about the sad passing of Abe Vigoda, mm -hmm. who played um, Tessio in The Godfather. You don't know what I'm talking nope. about. Um, not my head. But the thing you might recognize about Abe Vigoda is he was constantly, you know when they have those roasts with the comedians, they have yeah. the roasts. They were always making fun of Abe Vigoda for being old. And there were rumors I hear back to 1982 where people thought he was dead. And so they would keep mistaking him for being dead, even though he wasn't. 82, that's 92, 2002, that's 15, 20 <laughs> years and people thought he was dead. He yeah. actually died now. Um, but he was in a million different, I mean, he was in Taxi. He was in, you know, The Godfather, of course. I mean, he was, he was one of those character actors who was in a million things, so. Gosh, um, this is an incredible surplus lately of celebrities and musicians that we've lost. I know that this happens throughout the year. I just feel like this month has been full of it so far. I know. So it's crazy. I know. Let's slow it down for a while it's and awesome. stop that. Yeah. We need to have just a little reprieve from losing, yeah. you know, these major characters in American culture. Well, I'm sorry that you didn't get your Godfather fix. And now I don't know. Oh, to, oh so we so we were watching it. Taco crashed. Night. So we watched the Godfather one. We put in the DVD and the DVD. we watched so the entire the movie. Okay. So now Very I don't good. think I can go back and watch the epic because I am a little bit tired after yeah, watching you've had, you've five hours out. of Godfather. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of accents, I forgot. I, I watched Rocky three. Yeah. Yo, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was fun learning. They should have had subtitles for him. <laughs> That would have been helpful, right? It was hard to understand. Now, why did you watch three first? I don't understand. I'm telling you, it was all that was on AMC, so. Oh, that's right. I, I was just she watching watched it with commercials, yeah. folks. I don't know why you would I do know. that. I'll have to get the series. Okay. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook, YouTube, or Google Plus by simply searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time.